Hey friends, in this video we're going to talk about the three ways you can control your TVs, IR, serial, and IP. All right, so we just did a video about the difference between video distribution and TV control, and we've already had a number of questions about TV control. I thought it was a good time to answer this for you here and make sure we're all on the same page. When you're running your TVs, and for that matter, your video sources, there are three methods for controlling those devices, IR, serial, and IP. IR is really where we came from. Serial and IP is sort of where we're at and where we're going. But odds are, in your home, you probably have TVs and video sources that take IR, serial, and IP. So we we'll wanna talk about all three real fast and why you might want one over the other. The biggest thing you want to understand with these methods of control is the importance of two-way feedback. Most likely you've used an IR remote. Most TVs that you buy today, the remote that comes out of the box is an IR enabled remote. It uses IR to control the TV. It's got a little light on the front of the remote that blinks and sends a command to the TV. There's a sensor on the front of the TV that receives that command. And we've been using IR to control our TVs and our video sources for years. If you've ever used a universal remote like Harmony or URC, you've probably seen one of those blinking lights that you stick on the front of the TV or the VCR or the Blu-ray player. Those are called IR buds and it's literally blinking a light on that sensor that's on the front of the TV to send a command to the TV. So that's IR. Now in a really simple one room solution where you're just using the remote to turn the TV on and off, change the volume, it works great. The second you start integrating multiple pieces into the setup and you wanna have scenes, then it starts to fall apart because we don't know the state of the TV or the remote, this device doesn't know the state of the TV because IR isn't able to give us two way feedback. So here's an example, if you've ever used a universal remote, you've probably experienced. In this particular example, the TV is already on, but everything else is turned off. When you hit that button to play the movie or to play the Apple TV, everything turns on, but the TV turns off. You have to walk over and manually turn the TV on, or you turn everything off and then press the button a second time to get everything to turn back on. If you've ever experienced this, it's maddening. And the reason this is happening is because the remote, the smart home, it doesn't know the current state of the TV. It doesn't have that two-way feedback. Now with serial and IP control, we get two-way feedback, so in that exact same example, if the TV is already on and we press a button, it knows the TV is on, it has logic to say, okay, leave the TV on, but go ahead and turn the Blu-ray player and the Apple TV, the surround sound receiver all on. So you get a very reliable, consistent experience when you execute that command. Now there's some other things at play here, but to keep it really simple, the biggest thing at play here is the two-way feedback, and that's what we want to focus on. When we have clients come to us and design a new system from the ground up, and they're picking all new gear for their media rack, for their TVs, for their video sources, we require that their TVs and video sources support IP or serial control or preferably both. We won't work with the TVs and the video sources unless they support both. And the reason for that, we found that the user experience suffers and clients tend to be unhappy with the user experience because they don't have that two-way feedback. So when they're moving around their house and they're pressing buttons to control their TVs and their video sources, it's unreliable. It's not as consistent as they would like it to be and that's a frustrating user experience. But when we're able to control those TVs and those video sources with either serial or IP control, we get that two-way feedback and we're able to give the client a much more reliable user experience that's much more enjoyable. Now the biggest difference between serial and IP is that serial is a hardwired connection. Your smart home has some kind of a controller or a small box that has a hardwired connection running from that controller to the back of the TV or the video source. It's literally sending commands over a hardwired connection to the TV or the video source. IP control is over the network so it doesn't need a hardwired connection. It can send the signals over the network. Now I strongly recommend that you hardwire those devices into the network, but you don't have to have a hardwired connection for IP control. Now you'll see as you ask different dealers and programmers, they've got really strong opinions about serial versus IP. What we've found is it's much more application driven. For example, when we use Anthem receivers, the programming works a little bit more reliably when we use serial. When we use Sony TVs and Samsung TVs, we prefer to use IP control. For us, it's much more about the application and our experience with those methods of control with those applications than it is about being in the serial camp or the IP camp, but regardless, we want serial or IP control on all of our TVs and video sources so that we have two-way feedback. Now in your existing setup, especially if you're scaling your system and building it, odds are you already have some TVs or video components that use IR control. I'm not telling you you need to throw those out. I'm not telling you you can't use them. You can use them. What you want to be aware of and understand is that the user experience with those devices is not going to be as reliable or as enjoyable as a user experience 
experience you get with the newer devices that have serial or IP control. Now, a really important tip when you're going out and you're buying those new TVs and you're trying to find a TV that's IP controlled, a lot of people assume that because a TV is a smart TV and connects to the network that that means it's IP controlled. That is false. A surprising number of smart TVs that connect to the internet are not IP controlled. You want to make sure that the TV is enabled for IP control or serial control. It's always changing, but right now our go-to TVs for control are Sony's IP enabled TVs and Samsung's new IP enabled TVs. That's our preference when we're designing new systems. We have used and worked with other TVs, but if you come to us, those are the TVs we're going to recommend for control. We can have a different conversation about what TVs you like for video quality and bells and whistles and all that, but for purposes of control inside of a smart home, right now as of this video, we like Sony and Samsung that are IP enabled. Now I don't want to totally geek out on this video and go into the nitty gritty. I did find some really cool videos I will link to in the comments below where some people a lot smarter than I am really geek out about the nerdy stuff. If you want to look at those videos and get a better idea of how IR works and how RS-232 works, I'll leave those links below. Hopefully this helps if you're designing a system right now or if you're one of our clients that's received a quote and you're trying to make heads or tails of IR versus serial versus IP. Hopefully this answers the question. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, we'd love it if you'd like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thank you.